Hi, this is Lance from the Langchain team. And I want to do a quick video here on the, the topic of LangServe and how you can use LangServe to go from chains, uh, kind of a, a prototype, to kind of a production application like a web service. And the kind of simple mental model here is that chains that you define have some set of methods. Um, LangServe allows you to kind of take that and to map those over to HTTP endpoints. And so in particular, You've seen a lot probably in the past about language and expression language. It basically provides a common interface of, of methods, for example, invoke that stream for chains, and it integrates seamlessly with LangServe. So you can have any LangChain expression language chain and basically deploy it as LangServe app. And these methods then are basically are, are, are provided then as HTTP endpoints invoke bat stream, as you can see here. So let's go through this process. Um, and I've kind of shown you how we can do this from scratch, basically by creating this common environment and activating it. So that's where we are here. Empty directory, activated environment, just saved a little bit of time here. Um, and we've done some installs. So these should already be in. Um, great. So this is all set. Now, what these installs are, this is LangServe. So you can see this is a repo hosted in Langchain.ai. You can read about it here in detail. Very simply, I've just done these installations so that we have everything we need. Now I want to kind of introduce something that's pretty interesting. Let's build a new app here. Now it asks us what package you'd like to add. Now this is where I want to spend a little bit of time because this is actually something that's very interesting and I think is uh, maybe a little bit underappreciated. So we've built out over the last month or two, a very large set of packages in this LangChain template library that works seamlessly with LangServe. So you can take all these existing templates and then deploy them as a web application very easily. And we'll walk through that process very shortly. But the main point I want to note here is that here's our template library. We can kind of peek around. Um, this has a lot of templates you can like look at and play with many for RAG, you can kind of sort by, um, yeah, you can sort by popularity, you can search, um, has lots of integration partners. This is a really nice way to explore different kinds of applications you might want to kind of deploy. And um, in particular, one that I'll, I'll kind of work with and show here is from our friends at Neo4j. Um, so it is Neo4j semantic layer is the template name. And we can find it here, right here. So this is a pretty neat template that uses an agent to interface with a graph database. And you can kind of read the details here. It's, it's again, it's in this templates page. It shows there's a number of different tools. Um, and I'm going to show you how you could very easily deploy this template for yourself. Um, so go back to environment. Remember it asks us, what package would you like to add? So all I'm going to tell it is, yeah, Add that Neo4j semantic layer template, which we just looked at. And it's asked, do you want it anymore? I say no. And now do you want to install it? I say, yes, let's go ahead and install this. So that's great. So now it's being added, installing all the requirements, and that's great. So now you can see our directory is populated with a few things. So let's actually walk through this. You can see packages. Now here's a template we just added. That's great. So this is, again, all the code necessary. This agent.py actually contains the chain itself. It's right here, so that's great. Um, and let's actually peek around a little more. So in addition, we can see right here that um, it is basically exposed to the module, neo for a semantic layer, so that's all great. Here's our package. Now here is our app, again, using poetry. And we can see automatically that Neo4j semantic layer has been added as, as basically a package that can be used by our app. So that's pretty cool. It's all there. It should all be installed. Um, and we can look at our app. And now this is where there's one subtle thing I want to explain. We can open the server.py. Now this is actually where uh, the FastAPI web server is defined. Now you see this right here? This is actually where we are importing, again, um, our chain, Asian Executor will import as, you know, some name, that's fine. And this add route is something that I want to draw your attention to. That's kind of the most important point here. So what's add route doing? 
I'll go back to slides and show you a little bit. Um, again, this was our app structure. We have a server.py, we have our package. The Tomal kind of told us, okay, it, it told our app that, hey, there's this package, it exists, it tells you where it is. We import it into server.py. And what we're doing here with add routes again, so now we have, imagine this is our, this is our agent chain that we just talked about this, in this Neo4j template with this common set of methods. Now add routes and server.py creates HTTP endpoints for those methods. That's all that's going on. So that's pretty cool. Um, so again, we've actually added these. And from here, let's kind of clear this out. Um, yeah, we can just make sure everything's installed. Let's do that. Um, so this is actually going to kind of look at our app, make sure all the dependencies are there. So that's cool. Great. And then we're just going to run linechain.serve. Very nice. So let's see, it's running. Now this is great. So now let's actually peek over here and see what's going on. Right here. Okay. So we can see that this is pretty cool. Remember we talked about, we again, we had our agent chain. That changed the language expression language object. So it has a runnable interface with a few common invocation methods, invoke, stream, batch. And they're now exposed here in our web service. Of course, it's running locally. This is not hosted. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But it's here. This is pretty cool. Um, and then you can kind of see, so again, this is going back to the documentation. Here, it, um, it tells you a few different ways you can interact with this, right? Um, and one that's pretty cool that I like is this playground. So that's right here. Boom. Now, the only thing I'll mention that I did, which I didn't show, is I had the API keys right here. Of course, I have my OpenAI API key. And our friends at Neo4j gave us the URI as well as username and password for a particular test graph database. So I added those. That's all I did beyond what I just showed. The other thing is that I do have these in place. So I have Langsmith set up, which is something that you're going to want to do and just have these API keys defined. So again, I have my API keys defined. That's the only thing beyond this workflow that we're actually, that, that I've actually done. We've run langchain.serve. That spun off of our web server locally. And we can see our endpoints here. And we can see our playground right here. That's all cool. Now let's go back and look at, um, let's go back and look at this page. And we can see this is, um, an agent near the graph database. Um, the particular database that we, they gave us access to ha happens to have movies. So I just know that because that's the database that I've been given. Of course, for your own application, this could be whatever you want. So if I go back to our playground, I can say, okay, um, give me some um, movie recommendations about like uh, that are film noir, uh, crime or something. Right, doesn't matter. Um, so now this is running. Now with the showing, this is actually the agent kind of undertaking of our actions. You can see the kind of it has this full output trace here. That's pretty neat. Um, and okay, so here's the answer. Here are some film noir movies you might enjoy: Sunset Boulevard, High and Low, M. Okay, great. Now I want to show you one other thing here quickly. Um, if I go to Langsmith, let's move this around a little bit. Let's make sure I'm in my personal project. This is my personal project right here. So this is automatically integrated with my links with API keys defined. I can actually see what's going under the hood here. I can look at the trace. Um, so if this was this was my question. Give me some recommend movie recommendations about film noir. Here is that answer, and I can actually kind of run through the trace. I can see the different parts of the app and what's going on. Um, so this is pretty nice. Um, so if we kind of go, if we kind of like like lift back out here, all we've done is again, looking at our code, we did a few very simple things to create a new Langsurf app. We imported this template. We, all we really had to do is specify right here, hey, I want to import this. I want to add these, uh, add, basically add our chain um, as routes in our app, which again, like we talked about here, just makes those the, those chain methods accessible as HTTP endpoints. Um, 
which we can see here indeed. There they are, invoke batch stream. And this also gives us a playground where we can interact with that chain seamlessly. And this is all running locally. Um, now let's say we want to go one step further. Let's say that we don't just want to run locally, we want this to actually be hosted as a kind of a web service. So we also have hosted Langserve. And for that, um, I will show you something pretty neat. So I did something really simple. All I did was, and I kind of already did this, so I don't want to waste your time right now, but I took that repo that we were just working with. Now, this is, this is a new one we just created, right? We just saw we built this. This is the same repo, but I just basically, I pushed it to GitHub, so now it's this GitHub repo um, that exists here on mindchain.ai, but it's exactly the same code. And this is showing exactly what we just did, right? Nothing special here. Now, here's the fun part. Let's say I want to actually deploy this um, and um, I'm going to go over to Langsmith and you're going to see this deployments page. Okay. This is pretty cool. Now, not everyone has access to that yet. I actually did the deployment through uh, our Langchain org, but it's something that is it's rolling out and people will have more access to very soon. And what you can see here is new deployment. And all I did was I just copy and pasted, um, again, this GitHub repo that I created um, right here, created a name, and I added my keys, which I'm not going to show here. Just to, it's kind of boring. And I also don't want to show you my keys, of course. Um, but the point is, it's super simple. We built our, you can basically see we built our repo uh, again here push this to github great um add it here and you can create a new deployment now in this particular case i've already done that um so here's our deployment and it's running that's all great um and it is exposing the let me see if i actually have a link to it anywhere handy um right here okay so if you go to the deployments page, it actually shows you um, exactly uh, the the URL for the app. So this is spinning up right now. Um, and let me see. I might actually. Okay, here it is. Cool. So this actually looks. This it's almost kind of you know it, it's kind of like redundant because I've already shown this running locally. But of course, what's cool is this is actually just hosted over the web, so anyone can access this. I can give you this link, and you can play with it. But let's kind of test it out. So again, this is our local playground. Boom, let's just copy this over. Great. And here we go. Let's just see if this will work. And OK. So again, here's the same playground. But now look at the URL. This is on our hosted Langserve app. That's pretty neat. Um, and again, we can interact with just like we did locally. So yeah, for some reason, I was on like a film noir kick or something. Great. Um, let's just test this. It should reproduce what we ran locally. Um, and okay. You can see everything running. Yeah. Okay. So great. It does. So that's pretty neat. Um, and again, all we've done is really simple, right? Here's our repo. Yeah. Really nice. You saw, we built this from scratch. You just saw that, um, push it to GitHub. I've already done that, so you know, don't want to waste your time with all that setup. Here it is, basically the same code, nothing too fancy. Um, and we have within Langsmith, you can see here's the deployments page. I created a new deployment, pasted the URL, added the keys, and then what you'll see is a deployments page that looks just like this. That's it. And it takes a little bit of time to build and deploy. I didn't want to waste your time with all that, so I already had done that. But that's the main point, right? You have your like serve app locally, you push it to a repo, connect the repo to your deployments, create a new deployment, um, and that's it. And then that is running through the web and that's great. So then your, your app is accessible to anyone on the web. You can share this link and obviously create a nicer link and so forth. So that's really it. Um, and maybe again, if I like kind of roll back through that entire stack, really all we did was we create a like serve app that's great. A Langserve app lets us take any Langchain kind of chain 
and express it as a web service. That's really all that's going on here. Um, and in particular, it works with language expression language, mapping the invoke batch stream methods in the runnable interface to HTTP endpoints. That's all that happened there. There's a whole bunch of templates you can actually use out of the box that just work. And we did that. So we showed that with this Neo4j uh, semantic, um, yeah, what was the name? Semantic layer template um, that we can just, you know, in one simple line, uh, we can add it to our app. Um, that's exactly what we showed here. Boom. It just built it for us. Again, all we had to do is in that server.py, we add it in so that um, it tells our web app that um, basically it, it tells our web app to create HTTP endpoints for the methods of this particular chain that we care about. That's really all that's going on. That's really the only thing you need to do. Um, and then it just works locally. We showed that. Um, and this is actually, uh, I'll just put this over here. Then again, we create the repo and we um, then deployed it through host and lang serve. And we can see our deployment here. We can see our playground here. Um, so that's about it. Um, hopefully this was somewhat informative and um, yeah, happy to answer any questions about it. I'll make sure these slides are public and with the video. Thanks.